everyone and welcome back to the channel thank you so much for clicking on this video new year new hair who's this 2023 is gonna be the year i get into wigs y'all so y'all gonna be like front row center to like the awkward stages of the wigs because uh obviously i don't know how to do it but we're gonna do it anywho why we're here these are my 2023 oscar predictions y'all i slept on the golden globes I, were they canceled for starters i don't know and then they were like mid of the week totally blanked out on doing my prediction my reaction globe but we're not sleeping on the oscars yeah i know that's like my super bowl so um announcements um not announcements nominations go out on tuesday honestly my gold derby like score for this year has been like so bad because i haven't really been following up with a lot of like what's going on who's like on the top plus i don't really feel like there's really big i mean there are some front runners but like like i feel like other times it's like oh this is it like these four people these five people and i feel like it's very exciting because i don't feel like i've seen or heard that really but then again i just haven't been like in the conversations so that could just be it we're just gonna go through all the stuff we're starting off with uh best live action short i have le pupil oh my god this is gonna be terrible you already know i'm like terrible with pronunciation also it's a glasses type of ring situation because i know i'm blind i need to read stuff so uh an irish goodbye the red suitcase warsha and the lone wolf i don't know any of these movies um i kind of went with the odds and kind of what i've been hearing around and the title then we have best documentary short uh we got the flag makers the elephant whispers 38 at the garden nuisance bear and holding moses again i don't i don't know any of this best animated short the boy the mole the fox and the horse new moon the flying sailor save ralph and ostrich show me the world is fake and i think i believe it it's like so cute of course i'm gonna let walt for that all right then we got best international film like i, I have seen one movie which is my top movie right now argentina 1985 it's actually really really good i still need to watch all quiet on the on the western front I just haven't been feeling like all that great and I just feel like that really needs like my full on attention because it's like a, I mean I don't mind war movies but I feel like I have to be in the mood for it and I just haven't had a chance to check it out but I'm definitely going to uh, before Oscar night and then we have Decision to Leave, Close and The Quiet Girl. Once again I don't really know anything about this. Um, Stuff well hold on uh, let me see here edit. I feel like there was some other ones international film. So the quiet girl i think i had heard something about bardo um so that could also be a contender possibility but i think i'm gonna leave it as i as it is right now just because bardo's a little bit further just like a little bit and i'm just gonna go with the odds on gold derby here yeah best documentary feature we have all the beauty and blood and the bloodshed sorry Fire of Love, All the Bretts, uh, Na Navelli, and The Territory. We have Best Animated Feature. Now, of course, the one that's going to win is kind of when I can start putting in my two cents a little bit. Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Absolutely love it. One of my favorite movies of last year. If you haven't seen it, I highly, highly recommend it. It is an animated uh, stop motion movie on Netflix. There's a different kind of adaptation of Pin Pinocchio, just like a different darker version of it it's so much better uh then we have turning red i don't like turning red y'all oh that was like one of my worst movies last year i hated it but i'm pretty sure it's gonna get nominated then we have marcel the show with shoes on which was actually the last movie that i saw last year and it's actually a really really good movie i highly recommend it if you haven't seen it either it's really really cute just about this show and you know trying to find his people uh because he's a, basically alone in the world and it's really really it, it's like a documentary short deal i honestly did not expect to enjoy it as much as i did and i feel like it did kind of fall a little bit under the radar but everybody who did see it always had really really great things to say about the movie i just feel that it didn't get the recognition and like the hype that it really really deserved and hopefully now with like you know all the award shows you know you'll start hearing more about it but it's a really really cute movie uh, then we got Puss in Boots and then Window and Wild. Now Window and Wild, I don't know because I think that one had more stuff going on here. Let me get back over here. Let me get to what else is there. Because I feel like, what was the other one? The Bad Guys was another one that 
maybe but that's like further further down and i feel like window and wild might be like the best alternative strange world i mean a lot of people didn't really like it but it is kind of up there um i doubted that light years could look come on but you never know light year could just like get up the guy they want here <laughs> we have visual effects uh, then I have, of course, Avatar The Way of Water. I haven't seen that movie. I wasn't a fan of Avatar and I'm like, I don't, I don't feel like watching it. I'll, I'll watch it at some point. I kind of though do want to check it out in theaters because I feel like if you're going to watch it, you have to experience that in theaters. It's just like, oh my god. But people do say that it's way better than the first one. I think they said it's way better than the first one. And then we got Top Gun The Batman. Um, I'll quit on the Western Front and 13 Lives. Now, 13 Lives, the great thing about, if you haven't seen 13 Lives, it's a really good movie. Um, I don't remember if I reviewed it or I just talked about it like in my monthly wrap up, but it's, a, it's based on a true story. But from what I've heard is that it doesn't really seem like it has a lot of visual effects, but it actually does have a lot of visual effects. So that's really neat how great their visual effects was that you don't even tell that they're there. So that's like a big plus. So then we're moving on to sound. And I got Top Gun, Maverick, Avatar The Way of Water, The Batman, All Quiet on the Western Front, and Elvis. And then for best song, I have RRR, The Natu Natu. I'm not gonna lie, y'all. Everybody's talking about RRR, let's check it out. And then like, I just could not get into it. And then I'm like, oh my God, it's so long. I ended up turning it off and I was just like, I'm sorry, it wasn't for me. <laughs> but the song was cool, I, I will say that. And then we got uh, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Lift Me Up, Top Gun, Maverick, Hold My Hand, Gilmore de Toro's Chao Papa. Oh, that was awesome. uh, Tell like a woman from applause. So best score, I do have Babylon. Babylon unfortunately did kind of fall a little bit under the radar. I don't think it performed very well at the box office. If you haven't checked it out, I highly, highly recommend you check uh, that movie out because it's really, really good. Uh, then we have Gilmore de Toro's Pinocchio, The Fablemans, uh, Woman Talking, and The Banshees of Inishirin. Uh, best production design, I got Babylon once again, Avatar The Way of Water, The Fablemans, um, Elvis, and Black Panther Wakanda Forever. And honestly, I just kind of like put them in there. I don't really say like my number one pick. I think I said my number one pick a little while ago, but I just kind of like moved them over. <laughs> they're like in no official, I mean, they're like in no official order here, but that's not the official order I had it <gasps> I just thought about it that does give me points too depending on it right <gasps> I probably should move it up I don't know I have to I have to check I have till Tuesday to move stuff around best makeup and hairstyle um the well Elvis the Batman all quite on the western front and Amsterdam as well so best film editing everything everywhere all at once Top Gun Maverick Elvis uh the Banshees of sharing and all quite on the western front you can tell that's gonna get a lot of nominations then uh best costume design got black panther wakanda forever babylon elvis mrs harris goes to paris which i have not seen either and the woman team best cinematography i have top gun maverick all quite on the western front the batman elvis and brado no y'all i really want to put everything everywhere all at once there And then I feel like maybe Avatar should be on there. Should I put Avatar versus... I don't even know. I think I had heard somebody had Brado on there. You know what? I'm going to change Brado and I'm going to put Avatar. Ugh. Or should I put the Fablemans? The Fablemans got like no love at the BAFTA. So that could really like have hurt it here. Mm, I don't know what Brado is about either. I'm going to change Brado. I'm going to take that off. Okay, and should I put Avatar? This is cinematography, right? I haven't seen it. Fable Miss is really nice too. And they kind of me a bunch of old farts. And like, I mean, this is a movie about like, you know, making it in like Spielberg, right? And they love Spielberg. Uh, oh my gosh, should I do Avatar? Should I do the Fable Miss, y'all? Should I have left Brado on there? I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna put Avatar. This is the moment that she regrets it when Brado gets nominated. Best original screenplay. We got Everything Everywhere All At Once, The Fablemans, The Banshees of Inner Sharing, Tar and Triangle of Sadness. I have not seen Tar or Triangle. Triangle. <laughs> or Triangle of Sadness. 
uh, just some like other ones that I need to watch before um, before the big night. We got best adapted screenplay. We have the well woman talking. She said glass onion and aquan on the western front. I feel like this may be glass onions only nomination. Wait, was it? I feel like I haven't said glass onion before. I don't think Glass Onion is going to get too, too too much love, to be honest with you. Getting over here to the acting categories. Best Supporting Actor. Um, I feel like this is a pretty good lock for the most part. Like three. Kiwi is going to be the one that wins. He's definitely going to get nominated. He's been sweeping all around. Sorry if I mispronounced your name. You're, there's, there's nothing new here, right? Then we're going to have the Banshees of Inishirin Boys here as well. Brendan and Barry. I mean, I feel like they're full-on lock-ins. Then we have Paul Dano from The Fablemans. And, uh, yeah, he did really good. He did really good this year. He was in this. He was the Riddler and the Batman. And then Eddie Rainman for The uh, Good Nurse, which I haven't seen either, has been getting in in a lot of places. So we're going to move on to Best Supporting Actress. And I feel like Angela Bassett, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, shoe in. Like, I feel like she's going to win. And then we have Carrie from The uh, Benches of Inishirin. I feel like she's a pretty lock-in. Jamie Lee Curtis, Everything Everywhere All At Once, for sure. And I really, really do think that Stephanie Sue is going to get in as well. She's from Everything Everywhere All At Once, and I absolutely loved her in that. And I feel like the last spot is going to go to Holly Chow. You already know. Best Actor. And I feel like my four, top four, are pretty, pretty much, like, in there. Like, they're going to be in. So I have Brendan Fraser, of course, for The Well. Austin Butler for Elvis, which if you recall, when I did my review for Elvis, I said Austin Butler needs to get nominated and he will get nominated. Yeah, go back. Because I said it. I predicted that way back when everybody predicted it, to be honest with you. Then we've got Colin Farrell for The Banshees of Inishirin. Bill Knightley for Living, which I haven't watched yet. And I feel like the fifth spot, as you can tell here, I have Tom Cruise for Top Gun Maverick. I don't know, y'all, because, like, it's Tom Cruise and, like, you know, he has issues. He... Didn't get Golden Globe. He didn't get, I think, SAG or whatever. I'm like terrible with award shows and who got what. But you know, because it's Tom Cruise and he has like issues and stuff. Um, I'm going to go wild card and I'm going to say he's going to get a nomination here. But if he doesn't, I mean, I don't know. I've, I've, I've heard stuff about Hugh Jackman and the Sun, which I haven't watched. I've heard the movie is not good, but his performance is really good. And then Paul Mescott in After Sun also I've heard really good things about, which I haven't seen the movie either. I feel like those might be like possibilities. And if I had to put one, I'm gonna say, I would say Paul Mescal from After Sun would be my sixth spot if Tom Cruise didn't get in. Yeah, for actress. Yeah, I already know, Michelle Yeoh. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Love her, love that movie, favorite movie of all time. But. Kate Blanchett from Tar, she's like trying to maneuver her way up in there, right? She's, you know, it's been like back in, like they both won. I haven't seen Tar, but I've heard great performance, you know. Viola Davis, she's she's gonna get nominated. She's she's there, the woman king, great performance. Then we have uh, Danielle Deadwell from Till, haven't seen the movie, but I feel like she's a good thing. Then, fifth spot, Michelle Williams, The Fablemans. I feel like she's gonna get snubbed again this time around. I don't know. <sighs> she wasn't nominated in like other, I think it was like the SAG or something, Globes. She wasn't nominated for something else. BAFTA for sure. And I feel like something else she wasn't nominated for. As you can see, I have Ana de Adamas for Blonde. I did not like Blonde. Blonde was not a good movie, but Ana de Adamas' performance was spectacular. I will give her props. I will give. The movie props are props are due and the props are due in the performance, not in the movie. Because the movie is not good. I don't watch that movie. I mean, you can watch it for her performance, but like, just watch like a little bit. <laughs> watch like the Academy clips for for it. So you can see like her performance is really, really good. So I'm going to pick another Adam month. And my sixth spot is going to go to Michelle Williams. But I could be mistaken and it could be backwards. And like Olivia Coleman, the Academy really loves her as well. But I just don't... Don't see it, but it could be another Kathy Bates. You remember when Kathy Bates was nominated? I said, Yeah, I was driving. I said, What? Ooh, that was exciting times, y'all. Exciting times. Okay, yeah, but I'm gonna have Ana de Armas. All right, then we have Director. Then we got the Daniels for Everything Everywhere All At Once, of course. 
Steven Spielberg, The Fablemans, Todd Field for Tar, um, Marty McDonald for The Banshees of Inishering, and Edward Berger for All Quiet on the Western Front. Final category, y'all. Best picture. Right, so of course last year, they did say that we are guaranteed 10 spots. Okay, so we have 10. Of course, my favorite movie of last year, Everything Everywhere All At Once. We have the uh, Banshees of Sharon. We have Top Gun Maverick. We have The Fablemans. We have Women Talking, Tar, Avatar, The Way of Water, Babylon, All Quiet on the Western Front. And I feel like The Well is gonna get in there. I just don't think that Glass Onion is gonna get there anymore. And I don't know about RRR. I really don't think so. I mean, who knows? Again, it could just come out of the left field and surprise everybody. But these are my predictions of who I believe is going to get nominated for the 2023 Academy Awards. Again, um, they're going to be announced on Tuesday morning. We'll see how well or how badly rather I did. Because again, I'm not really like in the know on things today. This award season, I've been totally off guard. Uh, but yeah, of course, I will be doing my winter prediction video live. That's the only time that I go live, y'all, because Yana will be scared going live. And I do that with Desiree. But we do definitely have a lot of movies to watch, catch up on before that. Before you guys leave, if you haven't already, if you can please give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, like, comment, share, all that other good stuff. And until next time, I'll see you guys at concessions.